The Doctor is in. Hi guys, it's Dr. Sal from DrSecrets.com. Thank you so much for joining in. Today we're going to take a look at skin cancer. Now in this short video, I don't hope to make you into an expert on identifying cancers, but I do want to clarify a few little misunderstandings about skin cancer and give you a little primer on what to look for if you suspect that you might have a skin cancer. Now, the first slide that I have here on the anatomy board is to illustrate that not every bump that you see on your skin is a skin cancer. This is a picture here of Mr. Joseph Merrick, also known as the Elephant Man. Now, as you can see, he is very disfigured here, but his problem was not skin cancer at all. So let's take a look at some actual skin cancers now. Now, what I'm going to detail to you with <coughs> is the skin cancers that I most commonly see in clinic. And I've actually removed a lot of these myself. The first one is um, the squamous cell carcinoma. Now, each of these uh, cancers, you don't necessarily need to remember the names of them, but basically their nomenclature comes from um, the, the cellular type that they originate from in the skin. The skin is actually a composite of many different cell types. So this particular type is called a squamous cell. And each skin cancer has its own visual signature. It's just like the way you would be able to look at somebody's signature and immediately recognize, oh, that's uh, Michael Jordan's signature or whatever. Um, these cancers, uh, a trained eye, used to seeing them, uh, can spot them immediately. But I'm just gonna show you a few of the features. Um, I'm gonna slow the process down for you so you could see what I'm looking for when I actually see some of these uh, skin cancers. So first of all, um, the squamous cell and the next one I'm going to talk about, the basal cell, they usually tend to be in uh, places that are exposed to sunlight. They're basically caused by um, a decade or so of UV damage to skin, to the DNA in the skin cells, um, making them vulnerable to abnormal replication later. So the nose bridge is one common spot that I'll see these things. Uh, in balding guys, you'll see them over the top of their head. You also see it over the forehead. Uh, another place I tend to see them is over the tips of the ears. And another place um, for people who occupationally have worked with their shirts off in the sun, so fishermen, construction work and stuff, I often see them also over the, the shoulder blades. So in this case here, um, for the squamous cell type carcinoma, uh, what I like to call this is, is a pizza looking sign. It basically looks like an ulcer that will not heal. And to me, it basically looks like a slice of pizza. Now, the key thing to understand here is uh, this is not the same as a cut. Uh, somebody has an abrasion, they, they, they hit their nose against something, that's gonna heal in a couple of weeks. This is something that month after month, the individual notices rather than healing, it scabs, they rub it, it the scab falls off, it just will not heal. And over time, it keeps getting bigger and bigger. That is not simply an ulcer or cut anymore, that is probably a cancer. And this particular type likes to ulcerate, so it's called squamous cell. The next type here is also here on someone's nose, again, because it's one of those sunborn areas that I just described. Um, this is called a basal cell carcinoma. This type usually looks kind of more fleshy, uh, bulging, with lots of little blood vessels in it. Um, this type I've also tended to see not just on shoulder blades, but also on the back of the um, like trapezius area. I, I've uh, removed some from that area as well. Now, the importance with all of these uh, tumors is, um, one, is persistence. If you, if you just have a skin lesion just for a couple of weeks and then it disappears, obviously that is not a skin cancer. These things usually will persist and persist and persist. In fact, in some cases when I'm not sure I might see someone today, I might tell them, come back in three months, let me look at it again. And by doing that interval uh, check, that gives me a better impression of, is this something uh, ugly duckling that I need to look at, uh, look after, sorry, or is this something that, that's just gonna fade out on its own? And then the next thing to, that I take into consideration is, um, well, no, sorry, let me start over. <clears throat> if, I, if, if when I see someone again and I'm, uh, thinking this is a high probability or a high suspicion that this thing is uh, skin cancer, then the next step that I do would be a biopsy. 
But before I get to that, the third one here, and this is one that definitely you don't want to mess around with, is the melanoma. This one is so devious and so uh, destructive that I've actually created uh, an entire separate video just on how to spot melanomas. Because melanomas, the other two are typically not life-threatening. Um, they're usually just a nuisance. Most cases we catch early enough before they erode, uh, sorry, um, erode most of your facial tissues. Um, but the melanomas are actually potentially life-threatening and quickly. They have a 10 times more likely to, to spread out and disseminate than the other two types. So um, getting back to um, what to do, the first thing you should do is if you observe a, a lesion over a period of time and you're really not sure about it, uh, you should go and see a medical professional, let them take a look at it. What I do is on the repeat visit, if I'm suspicious that one of these lesions is um, one of these, one of those three miscreants, or if on the first visit I feel pretty, pretty confident that that's what it is, then I will step straight up to doing a biopsy. And um, I've actually detailed in another video how I perform a punch biopsy. The punch biopsy is my preferred method of um, ascertaining whether a uh, lesion is a skin cancer or not because it's not a very invasive procedure. It's fast. In about 10 or 15 minutes, you're done. A week later, you have the pathology report and you know what you're dealing with. Um, if it if it looks like uh, something that's uh, going to take more than a punch biopsy, uh, something that's bigger, then um, what I'll do then is usually refer the individual either to someone in plastics or dermatology. And the reason for that is when they're doing the biopsy, they don't just want a, a, a core sample. What they're looking for is to cut out the evil and some of the normal skin surrounding it. So they look for a collar of normal skin around. So they do what we call a wide excision. So you don't just take out the part that looks ugly, you take out some of the normal skin around surrounding it too. So for those bigger procedures, even though I can do them myself in a lot of cases, just in the effort of time and um, in case there's any evidence of deeper um, uh, burrowing, I'll just refer you on to uh, uh, plastics or dermatologist specialist to remove. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is in a really, really succinct or brief summary, um, three of the most common skin cancers that get people a lot of a lot of people scared and running to the doctors when they actually have benign lesions. Uh, you should also check out the video that I've uploaded on spotting melanomas because that has an excellent um, slide in there that shows you examples of many different uh, benign or normal skin lesions or beauty marks or ugly marks, whatever you want to call them, versus um, what some of these tumors look like. So that would give you a real primer on spotting tumors and avoiding them. So thank you for watching. And don't forget to subscribe so I can keep you updated of new videos as they're uploaded. So thanks again for watching and have yourself a great rest of your day. And don't forget to wear UV block when you're out in the sun because those two miscreants I was just talking about, the basal cell and squamous cell, uh, they are strongly sun correlated. So that being said, bye for now. And thanks for watching. Stay well. Have fun in the sun. Thanks for watching. Get notified of new videos. Subscribe now.